Day is set to end on May 11th. Nursing and healthcare leaders, meanwhile, expect to see the shortage continue of nurses to impact care delivery. So, Kristen Gaspar, president and CEO of the Palomar Health Foundation, joins us now to discuss the impacts on our local health care system. Kristen, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. Well, the perfect storm of a nursing shortage, it isn't brewing. It's actually upon us and it keeps getting worse. So I'm really happy to be here today and share with you kind of the why behind it that we're seeing. Because as Paul and I were talking earlier, this was obviously something that was exacerbated by the pandemic, but really started really in 2012. We were talking about this nursing shortage. There was a number that were getting set to retire. And then with the pandemic, many were just burnt out. Yeah. So how how do we assess the numbers now and kind of budget because so many are becoming travel nurses with how lucrative that became during the pandemic how do we budget and figure out what position each hospital and healthcare system is going to be in well that's the tricky thing as you pointed out there's a variety of factors at play they were made way worse by the pandemic the first thing has to do with retirement so our data suggests that the average age of our nurses is 52 years old so we already know over the next 15 years, we'll see an exit of a number of our nurses due to retirements. And that's bad timing for our baby boomers because we also know we have an aging population that's going to be in need of care. Also, the turnout, turnover burnout rates for this profession are extraordinarily high. So we're looking at numbers 8.8% to 37% in terms of turnover, depending on specialty and, of course, geographic locations as well. And some of that can be attributed to people going through nursing programs and deciding to take a different career path. But a lot of it has to do with what you pointed out. It's that burnout factor. So if we think back early days of the pandemic, we were under orders as health systems to really shut down those elective surgeries, to maintain capacity in the hospital system in case there were any surges of COVID-19 patients. Effectively, what that meant is you had a number of nurses that were furloughed during that time temporarily, but it came, became permanent for many who decided to go a different direction with their careers. Uh, mothers like you and I were uh, home with their kids more when the school shut down as well. So a number of nurses just never returned to the profession, which further complicated it. And then those brave ones that actually stayed and they were at the bedside through that pandemic, you saw those really high uh, patient to nurse ratios during that time. And that leads to stress, that leads to burnout and that's where we are today and to solve this problem is going to be a little bit challenging because we also have a pipeline issue our nursing programs last year we turned away 92,000 eligible students from nursing programs because we also have a shortage of faculty in those nursing programs so you can see why all eyes are on this issue whether it be at the government level our health systems or the nursing programs themselves. So as health systems, we do absolutely have to flex and adjust. You're seeing the government step in. They've plunked down 8 million to really bolster uh, the faculty within these programs. But let's be honest, it's gonna be two to four years before we see those folks bedside moving through those programs. So there are a variety of things that the health systems can do uh, at Palomar. We're incorporating some of those things today. So what are some of those methods and, and routes to take when you're talking about keeping more nurses on staff and having that patient ratio lower? Sure, for Palomar, we really had to reimagine, we had to refocus, and we had to retain. On the retention piece, we're doing things that we've never done before. Uh, for example, uh, focusing on keeping our nurses as part of the Palomar Health family. So if people right now are signing on for three years with Palomar, they may, three more years with us, our existing nurses, uh, they may be eligible for up to $100,000 in a retention bonus, which is a wow. major change for us at Palomar. Uh, people like me over on the foundation side, I've adjusted. I've become a little bit of a cruise director these days within the health system, doing things really out of the box to uh, make sure that our employees feel appreciated and that their families are welcomed into the Palomar Health uh, Network as well. So you're seeing things like us inviting out American Ninja Warriors, setting up a 
Ninja Warrior Chorus, the back lawn of the hospital. We had Smash Mouth performing a concert there. Uh, Halloween parties. We just got done with Agapalooza. So seeing a lot of family activities to help with that burnout factor. And then in terms of the pipeline projects as well, uh, we're starting young. All K through third graders in our Palomar Health District boundaries are, we're encouraging them to get involved with STEM education. We've sent out 3,000 STEM kits for our K through third graders in our district boundaries. We've also welcomed into our campus a lot of young people. So a very thriving middle school MD program brought 1,200 students, eighth graders on our campus to explore the many career possibilities in healthcare. We're doing it again this fall. So a lot of out of the box thinking happening to address the pipeline, that existing burnout and retention. And we're gonna have to continue these things, Lauren, but the answer is an immediate. It's not gonna happen overnight, uh, but between the health systems within this region, I'm hopeful if we all focus on these items that we can make a difference. Yeah, hopefully turn some of those uh, burnouts into teachers and not That's have right. to turn away 92,000 applicants. Wow, really, really a, an interesting situation that we're in, but hopefully, you know, we have more hospital systems that are finding solutions to the problem. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen, always appreciate it.